Hello everyone. I wanted to talk a little bit about Jupiter and Uranus and their conjunction that just happened and is still kind of going on with an orb. With these outer planets, we use a 15 degree orb. You can even use a 20 degree orb. Um, and so this, even though Jupiter and Uranus conjoined around April 20th, they were still feeling a lot of this impact and a lot of the kind of like effects and the fruits of this conjunction do come out afterwards. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can watch the interview with Richard Tarnas and Chris Brennan. It's just very long and uh, he's quite an academic, so while I respect him a lot, it's just uh, it's a bit dry and it takes a long time to get through it all. So if I could just synops like, you know, make a synopsis of that. Jupiter Uranus is when we have a lot of amazing breakthroughs. Like I was saying in the last video, everything building up to that solar eclipse, there was so much tension. And then after that, it was like this big aha moment. And I really feel like something very good happened for the world during that solar eclipse. Like maybe some corrupt leader was limited in his power or something. But the Jupiter Uranus is a very like emancipating breakthrough type of energy. Things just work out. One thing that's really fascinating is uh, there was this that this very famous like legendary podcast now with this guy Terrence Howard, a Hollywood actor who went on Joe Rogan and started just going off about all the stuff about physics um, and all these mainstream science things being kind of wrong or not the full truth or not the best uh, description. And he goes into this other like polymath uh, and like all his kind of contributions and the periodic table that he made and all the stuff. What I thought was so interesting about that was that Jupiter and Uranus are aligned and this is a time when we have major breakthroughs in scientific discoveries and major breakthroughs in insights about like just truth, which is Jupiter, right? Uranus gives that Promethean emancipatory kind of energy to Jupiter and so he kind of like blesses it and in turn Jupiter kind of like crowns or blesses or gives grace to Uranus which is like innovation, weirdos, uh, um, extreme people. Um, and so what's fascinating is Terrence Howard, I looked at his chart and he happens to have Jupiter and Uranus completely perfectly aligned within down to the degree. He has it in Libra and in Hasta Nakshatra, the nakshatra of the hand and the nakshatra of understanding and grasping things. So Hasta makes a lot of sense. Hasta is a really smart, intelligent, like kind of like a know-it-all type of nakshatra, really. Um, and so, yeah, Terrence Howard, already the media, if you go and like type through YouTube and you, you type in Terrence Howard, it'll be like, Terrence Howard is insane. He's a fool. He's mentally unwell. And all these mainstream science people are already like trying to control it and dismiss it. But if you listen to the interview, it's not like, it's not like I would agree with everything he says, but he does bring out some really cool concepts and just new ideas. And I'm all about people thinking for themselves and new ideas. Oh, and, and he also, Terrence Howard also had Rahu and Aries. So it's like this whole eclipse was he was kind of being brought out into the forefront and Rahu and Aries is about thinking for yourself, you know, and not just trusting the status quo. And so Terence had <clears throat> Jupiter with K2 and Uranus all in Libra, the sign of the public and the status quo. So it makes sense that he was not meant to follow that same path. So that was all a really cool Jupiter Uranus thing. Um, the, the Terence Howard thing. So any of you guys have been following that topic, you can see, oh, that is Jupiter, his energy, you know, coming through um, at this time. And then also I wanted to talk about the Jupiter Uranus in the context of the nakshatras because it's happening in Kritika nakshatra. Kritika is actually a very much a science nakshatra. It's the star of ruled by Agni, the god of light. And so it has a lot to do with Jyotish and light and physics. Um, and so... I really do think that actually this interview Terrence Howard did is going to have a major impact on the future and just the way that scientists and people think because he brought all these new extreme Jupiter Uranus ideas out into the forefront, all these new um, 
scientific ideas you could even say. Uh, and then also Kritika's the Nakshatra of Agni. Agni literally means he who comes first because fire, Agni, the god of fire, lights the way. You know, he, he leads your way. And your light, your eyes, the light of your eyes is what lead. Um, so that has to do with leaders. Kritika is a huge nakshatra of leaders. If you want to know more about that, take the nakshatra course. I like as I was going through the examples, I stumbled upon so much leadership. It was insane. And people who are, I call it like the strong central leader, like how a fruit tree needs to have a strong central branch to maintain the balance. That's how this nakshatra is. And the moon grows strong central leaders when it's doing stuff with Kritika, or let's just say this nakshatra is responsible for growing that and growing people into great leaders and uh so yeah in a way i feel like this terence howard you know he kind of was a he took on this leadership role we could say um and then there's it's also i want to just say that it's a really interesting time for <clears throat> I think that new leaders should have started to show up in the world since that last solar eclipse and with this Jupiter Uranus thing. So there, we kind of are in a time when we do really need better leadership. If you just think about it, like the way the government is, like the way in the US we're having an election, no one likes either of the candidates at all. Why are we even going through this? You know, there's just such a lack of leadership. And I think that's also a big part of what this Rahu and Aries uh, eclipse period is about um, and recognizing the importance of leadership and uh, yeah so we have all that going on in the like in the mundane world but then now thinking about the financial astrology world this is what's really interesting um, Jupiter and Uranus have conjoined in Taurus the sign of money and the sign of wealth and it uh, back in 2021 <clears throat> when I was teaching a bunch of financial astrology courses, uh, we forecasted back in September of 2021, I was saying like, you know, this bull market, I predicted the all time high um, in November, and then this bull market's going to end and in December and not continue into 2022. And that ended up being totally correct. But then people were asking, well, when would it start back up? And uh, that's when I and another guy in the group, uh, Tom, we talked about how Jupiter Uranus is um, probably the next big push for the bull market, which would come up in uh, 2023 and 2024. And <clears throat> so it's really kind of crazy to look back on that because that's basically what happened. And so if you guys are interested in knowing more about the financial astrology, I did finally make a crypto forecast with new updates and new forecasts uh, for from basically June 5th today up until July 5th. And then also I talk about I'm going to do another one for the next month. It's going to be a monthly every month. There will be a forecast. But then July, I talk about July, the rest of July as well. Um, and even August a little bit because I've already plotted this all out. I'm just going to wait to give the forecast. But we have some big interesting moves going on, you guys. And uh, this new moon coming up in Gemini like tomorrow. That is going to be in the 11th house of the Bitcoin chart, chart of gains, rebirth. It's uh, that's one nice bullish indication right there. But then there's things are going to get a lot juicier up into late July and into August and there's some other little interesting things going on before then so if that interests you check out that patreon forecast um, and yeah it's, it's it's very exciting I'm very excited to be working focusing more on crypto I, I was kind of feeling stuck on what I was expecting and the eclipse like I was kind of really off with my forecast for right around that eclipse period but that's what always happens during the eclipses, but now that's over, and now things are looking a lot more clear um, <clears throat> with the trends of where things are going. So I'll leave it at that with the financial astrology stuff. Um, and yeah, what else is new? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I will also make a video on Saturn-Neptune conjunct coming up soon, but I just wanted to kind of <clears throat> 
talk a little bit more about that Jupiter Uranus energy. It's basically just like a really, it's a great time for, uh, for like learning for it's just more optimism. You know, Prometheus was the one who stole fire from the gods. And so that's what Uranus's energy is about. And it's blasting Jupiter. So it's like stealing knowledge and truth and heavenly fire and then feeding it into the world. The fact that it was in the sign of Taurus, and yeah, we had a new currency change where, you know, the Bitcoin ETF and the Ethereum ETF were approved. So basically it just became acceptable for mainstream investing companies to invest in crypto, which means crypto is an accepted mainstream asset. And that's just so fascinating because that's exactly what we were trying to say was really, uh, 2021 was the beginning of that time but then we talked about in the course how Jupiter Uranus would be when that would get kind of like when that would finally come about <clears throat> and it really did and so yeah in the course that that forecast I give it it's about 30 minutes long I also gave a recap of everything that has gone on in the market since 2022 when I did the last class and uh, yeah I don't know if you guys check it out tell me what you think about it um, <clears throat> okay, that's enough on this for now. Thanks, you guys. Enjoy your day.